This enormous 20-year-old Sun workstation is technically the first truly modern PC. It's running an AMD Opteron, the very first x86-64 CPU. So today we're going to restore and explore a computer that was basically from the future. So stay tuned. And if your ideal power to performance ratio is yes, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, brief history. Intel did technically make the first foray into mass market 64-bit computing with the Itanium in 2001. But unfortunately, the Itanium was terrible. It wasn't compatible with existing 32-bit software and almost nobody used it. Two years later, AMD released the Opteron, which was backwards compatible with 32-bit and 16-bit x86 software, which meant you had all the benefits of 64-bit architecture, like supporting up to 256 terabytes of memory, while still having access to an entire library of existing software. In fact, AMD initially wrote the spec for the technology, which Intel and others later wound up implementing. If you want to learn more about the history of AMD Opteron and 64-bit computing, I'll link to an excellent video from Level 1 Techs down below. But our focus today is this. Sun Ultra 40 Workstation. This is the very first one to use the AMD Opteron, making it the oldest PC capable of running things like modern Ubuntu Linux, or perhaps even booting Windows 11. Anyway, thanks Mike for rescuing this one from becoming e-waste because I've been looking for one forever. E-waste connoisseur shirt available at shop.actionretro.com. But today, I want to return this thing to a stock-like experience and install the original Sun Solaris 10 Unix operating system. That you could actually buy these things with Windows XP. And I want to open this thing up and take a look inside because this thing is almost comically over-engineered. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, delete me. Today's internet is a weird place. Everything you do and say online is analyzed, cataloged, chopped up, and sold on the open market of data brokers. And it's not just shady advertisers buying this data. Your private info can wind up in the hands of scammers, fraudsters, phishing schemes, and worse. Now look, another political text. This is exactly the kind of thing that Delete Me can help to address. I've been using Delete Me for well over a year now, and they help me control my personal information in ways that I was never able to do trying to do it manually. They constantly scour the internet for my info and report back to me exactly which data brokers and websites have it. And then, well, they delete me. And they provide constant reporting and a privacy advisor that I can reach out to at any time. Just look at my listings removed over time. There's a big spike in the beginning where they removed the huge amount of information that was just floating out there on me. And then a consistent removal of all the data that keeps popping back up. Get 20% off Delete Me consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash actionretro and use promo code actionretro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash actionretro, code actionretro. So first of all, this thing is an absolute monster. For scale, here it is next to one of these old Dells. My God, that's over 22 inches long. And if you thought the Mac Pro was over-engineered, check this thing out. First off, the inside of this door has these adorable diagrams telling you how to fix and take apart and do all sorts of maintenance. It even tells you how to properly repaste it. Look at that. Even under the door, there's more helpful diagrams, including how to take the fan tray off. We have a built-in lock. We have these latches that hold the plastic door in place. We have ourselves an NVIDIA Quadro K2200 PCIe graphics card. Some sort of solid state thing. Apparently this is actually a kind of quite large PCIe SSD from an HP ProLiance. I wonder if this is something that Mike stuck in there after market. Our RAM is secured underneath this cool latch, which has a fan. PC2, 5300, one gigabyte sticks. We even have super easy access to the power supply with this lovely bright green retention screw. And it slides out the back, look at that. Anyway, I don't really want to install on these regular old hard drives. Oh yeah, it's time for the wheel of SSDs. What are we gonna get this time?
Ooh. Yeah, 64 gigabyte dogfish SSD. Now, I'm sure somebody has made some sort of bracket we could use to mount this in there, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hang it directly off of the SATA connector. I'm sure that's fine. Oh yeah, check out our sweet period accurate Sun desktop battle station. I've got the original Sun Microsystems USB keyboard with a bunch of old notes like export all acquisitions to Hermes, period accurate tasty cake mouse, and I have what appears to be genuine Solaris 10 install media. Let's see how freaking loud this thing is. Oh my god. Yeah, it does very much quiet down after a minute or two. So I guess let's just try to do a Solaris install. Ooh, extracting windowing system. Fancy. Starting Solaris interactive graphical user interface installation. If screen is legible, press enter in this window. All right, let's blast through these menus here. I saw the sun, a strong and secure password and definitely not just the word action, that would be very insecure. We have to select our localization manually. Is that our boot disk? Oh no, that's it, look. 61 gigabytes, default layout. Yep, whole thing for Solaris. Oh yeah, this is working. Look at that. Hopefully jump cut to install complete. Okay, so the install did complete, but it didn't want to boot. And I was very confused, so I went into BIOS and I found this. For some reason, SATA 3 Dogfish SSD was excluded from boot order by default. I can hit X to put that back in. I'll just move it above the LAN boot option. And I'm leaving this in here in case anyone else is struggling to install something on their own Sun Ultra 40. Oh yeah, look at that. We've got GNU Grub in Solaris Blue. Let's boot this thing. Yes, here we are. We've got Sun Solaris. Yeah, we can choose our session type. We have CDE or Java desktop. We're going to start with CDE because that is my all time favorite old school windowing system. Um, root. Ah, there we go. <laughs> the common desktop environment, AKA CDE has been deprecated. Oh no. Man, this has got to be the most beautiful and the most 90s looking desktop environment there is. Look at the pink title bars and, and the purple and these desktop switchers here. Oh, look at these backgrounds too, my God. Okay, before we get too far, let's see the other desktop environment. Also pretty cool looking, but this is, yeah, GNOME desktop, just modified by Sun. So we've got the little Java logo on the launch button there. This is Sun Java Desktop System Release 3 from December 2004. Much more modern, of course, but I'm not a modern guy. Let's go back to our favorite common desktop environment. All right, what do we have on here? Yeah, something that's really cool about CDE is all of these have their own kind of start menus. Plug it into Ethernet Zero. See, so are we online? We are not. I don't even know how to get into preferences here. And jump cut to I have configured the internet. I had to do it very manually and Unixy using things like the hosts file and resolve.conf. But in the end, it worked. Here's good old frog find. Sun Solaris 10. Yeah, working froggy as ever. I'm very happy to see that the scroll wheel works. Now, of course, this is a very old version of Firefox. We've got Mozilla 1.7 for Sun Java desktop system. Yeah, we're not gonna be YouTubing in this browser. Although this computer with its 64 bit CPU is perfectly capable, believe it or not, of YouTube and many other things that we'll explore in the future. Now right, let's see what other weird software do we have on here. We have a calendar, 
text editor voice note. I don't have a microphone, though I do have speakers. All of our favorite applications like information. We have an email program. <laughs> I'm not going to set that up on here. Ooh, a print manager. Yeah, no games, no games at all. So Sun Solaris, pretty interesting, but I must confess my interest in this machine is more ridiculous than this. Oh my God, will this thing actually try to boot Windows 11? No freaking way, a 2005 computer booting Windows 11. But I think we'll have to save that for another time. If you'd actually like to see me try to install Windows 11 on the oldest possible machine that theoretically supports it, let me know in the comments down below. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more weird Unixy, Linuxy, ancient computer shenanigans, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And thanks again to Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.